Hello, I'm Jason Walcott and this is Walcott Fine Art. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at violet oil paint. I'll go over some different options you have that you can try and explain the difference between purple and violet. So, let's take a look at violet. So hello everyone and welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, different uh, violets or purples in oil paint. And uh, first let me start out by saying uh, there actually is a difference between purple and violet. Uh, oftentimes the two names are used in interchangeably. Uh, even pigment manufacturers will call, um, you know, one, one manufacturer will say it's dioxazine purple, the other man, you know, manufacturer will say it's dioxazine violet. And so there's a lot of confusion, but just quickly to clear up the difference, uh, the main difference is that technically uh, purple is uh, more red and violet is more blue. So if you were to look at uh, this Pantone swatch book here I've got from uh, my graphic design business, um, you see how this these swatches in here are sort of more reddish than these? Okay, this would be purple. And then this, these colors in here would be violet. So that's the technical difference between the two. So let's uh, get looking at the paints. And uh, the first one today that we're gonna take a look at is uh, dioxazine violet, uh, sometimes called dioxazine purple. Um, now Windsor Newton, they call theirs Windsor violet. It's um, Pigment Violet 23. And this is going to be your most common violet and probably the least expensive violet uh, color that you'll find. Um, now, straight from the tube, as you can see, it's extremely dark. Um, but it is a very intense violet color. Uh, it's a really beautiful color. I love it a lot. So if you mix it with a little bit of white, You'll see it makes that really beautiful, like royal purple. It's definitely leans toward the blue, the blue side. So in any you know any color, you're going to reveal its sort of true identity once you start mixing it with white, because that'll show you what the color really does uh, in mixes and in tints. So um, that's a dioxazine violet. Uh, now, this is a very transparent color, uh, so you can always also glaze with it uh, if you need like a really rich purple glaze, or you can use it as part of a glaze. Uh, and when you glaze with it. It has that same beautiful, like transparent, you know, royal violet color to it. You can see that. It's a really beautiful purple. Look how intense and blue, beautiful that is. Uh, so that's dioxazine violet. Now, dioxazine violet in watercolor, uh, there's some question as to whether or not it's permanent. Uh, most of the tests show that it is, um, but in oil paint, uh, it's probably fine. You know, it's permanent enough for artists use. Um, so you might hear something about that, but I, I um, most of the tests show that it is permanent enough for artists use. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Uh, so that's probably the one that you're most likely to run across or find the most useful if you want to have a violet on your palette. The next color that we have here is a quinacridone color, and this is quinacridone uh, violet, or sometimes um, you'll see it referred to as uh, permanent violet or something like that. Um, now this is the Rembrandt uh, brand. They, they refer to it as permanent violet middle, uh, but it is quinacridone violet, which is pigment violet 19. Now you can see... Uh, 
that this one is does actually lean toward more of a purple because it's got a little bit more red in it comparatively to the dioxazine violet uh, it's definitely more red um, again is because it's a quinacridone color it's very transparent you can glaze with it um, but you can see it's got that definite red undertone to it but it's much more purple than say like alizarin crimson or, or some color like that so and just to glaze on a white surface to show you what it looks like. So that's definitely more of a purple. And when you mix it with white, uh, it gets a little cooler uh, than the glaze color. Uh, but definitely still violet. <clears throat> so this would be like a great color if you were painting... Um, some light areas on like uh, red red onions that's a great color <clears throat> to use for that because it, it uh, you know sometimes the red onion skins have that really intense purple color where the light hits them so that's quinacridone violet okay now this next one is one that you're likely to see but it is one of the most expensive colors you can buy and that is cobalt violet uh, now this is a, again, this is a mineral pigment, um, as I've discussed in some of my previous videos, which means that even though it's very intense in color when it comes out of the tube, and if you glaze with it, uh, it won't, when you mix it with white, it's going to be more dull. It's going to lose a little bit of its color intensity. Uh, <clears throat> cobalt violet is a 18th or 19th century color, so it's been around for a while, um, and it appears at first to be similar to dioxazine violet uh, but you'll see when I mix it with white it's not as intense um, it's a color that a lot of landscape artists use and um, it's very dark like dioxazine uh, but landscape artists like it because it, it very closely resembles um, the violet of uh, sun uh, shadows when on a sunny day um, it does come out of the tube a little bit lighter than the dioxazine. Um, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but in mass tone, straight from the tube, it looks very intense. You know, it looks like a really intense violet color. But when you mix it with white, you'll see it doesn't look quite like the dioxazine violet. It's still definitely violet. But it has a, I think you can see that if I put this next to this. That this has a, a slight grayness and a slight dullness to it that this doesn't have. Do you see how this is more of an intense violet than this is in these two samples? And that's because cobalt violet is a mineral color. So, um... It's a color that you can try if you want to buy a small tube uh, and experiment with it. You might like it. Uh, because it's less intense than dioxazine violet, it doesn't uh, require as much uh, toning down if you want to use it uh, in your paintings um, or in landscape shadows and stuff like that. Um, but it is very, very expensive. Uh, it is one of the more expensive colors um, because the process of making the pigment, you know, is expensive. So... Uh, just keep that in mind, but it's something that you might want to try at some point. Um, but I don't find cobalt violet to be a really, like, crucial color. You definitely, it's not something you definitely need to have. And then the last one, which is kind of an interesting, oops, dripped here. Kind of an interesting color uh, that is uh, a little bit obscure, but I love it, is this quinacridone purple. Now this is different from quinacridone violet. This is much more blue. It's called purple, but it's actually a violet, like I showed you at the beginning of the video. I know it makes no sense, just go with me here. <laughs> so this quinacridone purple, as it's called, is pigment violet 55. And as far as I know, the only manufacturer that you can get this color from is Daniel Smith. 
uh, which is an American company. They're based in Seattle. Uh, they make nice uh, oil colors. They're mostly famous for their watercolors, but they also make nice oil colors too. But they're the only company that carries this Pigment Violet 55 Cranacridone Purple. And it's similar in color to um, to the Dioxazine Violet, but it's just, just slightly redder. So it's like right in between a purple and a violet. And the interesting thing that I found about this color um, is again because it is a quinacridone color, you can glaze with it. So um, it makes a great color for gla glazing. But the interesting thing about it is when you use it in a glaze. Which I have here it brings out more of its red undertones so it looks more purplish but when you mix it with white I found this to be very interesting it brings out more of its bluish undertones so then it looks more violet. Do you see that? So it's kind of interesting that it does that, um, but and yet it's still warmer than the dioxazine. Uh, it's kind of interesting that it has that sort of dual personality to it, and it's a really nice color. I like it a lot. Uh, so if you you know do do live in an area where uh, Daniel Smith products are accessible to you, uh, definitely try that out. It's the quinacridone purple. Pigment Violet 55. Uh, and as I said, they're the only company that makes it. Um, but this is a great, a really great purple to, uh, and it's very permanent. Uh, it's a really great purple to, to check out uh, if you want to have a violet or a purple on your palette. Now, the last thing I want to show you is after going through all this and showing you all the tubed violets that you can buy, uh, if you're ever in a pinch or you don't want to go and get a tube violet, um, I found the best violet can be made, you know, or a great, rather, a great violet can be made by mixing cobalt blue and quinacridone magenta, which I've discussed in my earlier videos. And if you mix those two colors together, it gives you this really beautiful, intense, violet that is pretty close to the dioxazine violet. So I just find that, you know, it's very useful to just mix. You know, and you can always adjust it, make it warmer or cooler based on what you want. Um, but that's a violet mixed from cobalt blue and quinacridone magenta. Look how beautiful that is. Uh, so that's probably the simplest way to go if you already have those two colors available. Um, but if not, feel free to try any of these uh, violet colors that I've showed you. And I hope that, uh, again, you found this video helpful. And I thank you for watching and take care. Thanks so much for watching. Go ahead and click on that subscribe button so you won't miss the next video. And why not spread the joy? Be sure to share my videos on your favorite social media. Don't forget to head on over to my website, walcottfineart.com, where you can see my art, read my blog, or when you join my newsletter list, you can win free art. Every month, I'll choose a lucky winner for my email list, and that person will receive a mini original oil painting. There's a chance to win every month, so be sure to sign up today so you don't miss out. Plus, you'll get my fun newsletter. See you next time!